Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I haven't done a video in so long, I've actually forgotten how to do it. So, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll probably find this is really crappy. But anyway, <coughs> today I'm going to look at Kronika, which is uh, the new Ice Gear synth that came out uh, a couple of days ago. It took me by surprise, I was very excited. Um, and then, because I'm short of cash at the moment, I balked at the $12 mark and then, and then bought it because, you know, I'm gonna, I, it was inevitable. I was going to buy it anyway. Right, what do we have here? Um, it has this very, has this very physical modeling kind of feel to it, the same as uh, Red Shrike and Mersenne and Laplace and, and all the others. Um, that, that seems to be their main point of strength. But the main thing about this thing isn't actually the sound it's making so much as this, this delay thing you're getting. So if I, let's pick up a sound here. So go to the factory, let's pick up a sound. Bad choice. Okay, so you see here we've got, um, but we're repeating the sounds to make this da 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 sound. So it's a bit like a, it's a bit like a, a very well programmed delay. So let's look at the architecture. Um, right <coughs> now, the it, it, I'm going to start off with a new sound here. So that's, uh, what we've got is four particles. Um, which are basically little FM synths. Uh, I think they're just two operator FM synths. And each of these particles has its own emitter, which is the thing that plays the FM synth. So, because uh, you see here, I've only got one particle, which is particle A and emitter A switched on. And you can switch between them all here. Uh, so I've got four of those. And I've just got one on now. And if I play this, bum, 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 bum. So I'm playing basically, um, quarter notes. Now I'm going to change the sync here to make it actually in time rather than free form. Uh, it is quite nice this sync you can turn off and you can make the uh, part you can make the emitter speed up or slow down. There's an awful lot of LFO is built into this thing but let's, let's just have a look at it uh, on 16th notes. Ding, ding, ding. And you can change around with those and add some bits and take some out. And uh, okay so this is the particle. The particle is being fired by the emitter. And I think it's slightly odd the way around they've done it. It's, uh, I had to sit around on the plane for an hour and a half this morning on my way here to Melbourne just to figure out which way things were going. So uh, let's just have a look at the moment uh, at the, let's turn all these off for the moment. Let's have it, everything at its basics. Now, the architecture for this is, I'll cut out the boring bit here. Let's just bring it up. This is from the manual. So, <laughs> so what you've got here is a clock or you've got freeform. Um, so you've got basically triggers coming in your keyboard and so on. And the, the keyboard then hits the emitter, which has which is firing this little pattern. And there's four of those. Uh, and each of those is now firing the particle thing for each time it hits a, a pattern on the emitter, it's firing the particle. And, the, and then optionally, you can send that in through a resonator You've also got a filter that can be uh, affected by an envelope or LFO. As with all the other ice gear stuff, you've got the choice of LFO or envelope or both on almost everything. And you've got a resonator uh, and a delay as, the, as your output effect. And back. Okay, so. So now I've taken out all the emitters except for the first particle trigger. So now it's just triggering like a normal thing. Um, over on the particle uh, section. It's quite strange. It's almost designed a bit like a drum synth because you've got this envelope here that allows you to to go down or come up on the pitch. And I can speed that up using the decay like a drum machine. So as you can see there, if I, if I put a particularly fast decay onto that and turn the envelope up, and then was to go down a couple of octaves. I'm almost hitting sort of uh, kick drum territory. So uh, I'm guessing, because I can't think of many useful reasons for having that, unless this is more designed with kind of percussion-y sounds in mind. Uh, you've also got an LFO, so you can, I can, if I go back up a couple of octaves to something more sensible, and then turn the rate up on that. You can see here I can, I can also make the, uh, the particle wobble backwards and forwards as well. 
and you've got a wave for shape on the LFO. So, okay, so that, that probably not the most useful thing in the world, but the envelope I played with around with this morning, if you want to make percussion sounds, it's very handy. Um, then you've got this FM depth and ratio. So at the moment I've got a two to one ratio, so that's why it sounds nice and melodic. If I change it up to something a little bit stranger, like 6.5. Because it's an FM synth, a two operator FM synth, so anything that isn't a, a multiple of the of um, the the uh, original carrier wave is going to give you something slightly uh, jarring, like that. And I can make a depth more, or the depth less, and if I take it down to zero, I'm back onto my sine wave, and so on. So, little FM synth, um, and you've got a level. Um, you've got attack and delay, uh, sorry, decay. Um, you've got uh, various other bits and pieces over here. You've also got a noise generator, so you can create yourself a noise generator. You stick the level up on that. And you've got white, pink, white noise, pink noise, blue noise, pitch noise, digital, and glitch. Okay, um, and I think this works quite well if you turn the decay down a ways. Um, because you get a much better effect with the emitter. So let's put some let's put some um, particles triggers on the emitter. Okay, and that can also mess around with the pitch. You can actually use that. I pitched it now down by an octave, and you can you can put an envelope on that as well. So you can so you can now hear I'm going up and down um, from the emitter also. So. Uh, how the interplay of that's going to work if you mess around with both of them, I'm not sure. I'll have to experiment a bit more. Uh, here you've got an envelope, so low pass filter. And you've got sustain here, I can turn up. This is quite interesting because if I do that, it's going to keep on playing my little pattern here. Now, that's actually more useful than you'd think because. I was getting quite frustrated that it was just playing me the effectively a bar's worth. Um, okay, and then you've got this, you've got two resonators, A and B, and you can send your four part, your four emitters through um, none of them or one of them or both of them. Um, so let's just pick on a resonator here. So, so far so good right let's now we can just turn on a let's turn on another one of these things and let's just make that bit noisy and let's turn on a third and we'll have that one going through a different resonator and then let's turn on a fourth and have a separate pattern again let's have it's a more cluster at the beginning here with nothing afterwards Okay, and then you can all mix them together, so have that one a bit quieter, have be a lot quieter. Okay, so you get the idea. So now we can have four separate um, little FM pingy sounds um, with, uh, with running through effectively four different sequences, um, and then you've got the resonator to give it that whole um, that whole effect to make it sound like it's physically modelled. You can turn on a delay and there's this, all this stuff you can edit in the delay. There's a delay filter, there's various modulations on the delay. It's quite a complicated delay. And you end up with stuff that sounds like this. To my ear, a lot of this stuff sounds a little bit nasal and rather irritating, but if you turn it down a couple of octaves, it's much more satisfying. And then turn sustain up on some of these emitters just so that 
sorry, sorry uh, yes, turns the sustain up a little bit so they don't cut off so fast. And you can come up with some quite nice patterns. And there it is. That's uh, Kronika, and uh, I hope you liked it. See you.